Hello, so this is a lab update video <coughs> of sorts. Um, I don't know, I just felt like there's a lot of things happening. Um, none of them that video worthy, but um, together I can just talk a bit. And sure. Alright, so the first thing here is our sodium methoxide solution. Now, if you watch the previous video, you'll see that it ended with it sort of a yellowy colour, or maybe a greeny colour sort of thing. Um, now every day it's basically um, slowly changed colour. Um, it went to a more yellow and then sort of a very light orange and that's the sort of colour you can see in the nitromethane video which I want to add nitromethane to it. And then it slowly went more um, brown um, and it's, it's been getting more brown. I don't know, I don't know where it's going to end up or what's going to happen to it eventually. And I also don't know why it's doing it. Um, possibly oh, a strong base, um, you know, um, organic solids, solvents. You know, it could be doing, doing some condensation producty thing. It's very odd, but um, because when it looked like the light green, it didn't really look that impure. It sort of looked, oh yeah, there's a bit of bit of green stuff in it, but it's not too bad. But now, now it looks dreadful. So, um, whether it's actually more impure than it was, or it's just the same level of impurity, but, you know, in a different colour, I don't actually know. Alright, something more infuriating. This is another final tetrazole container. Um, I don't know what's happening with this last step. I cannot get it working. Um, I've tried it probably four times now. I've had to remake the aminoglanidine bicarbonate. Makes me mad. I cannot get it to crystallize out. You know, so I'm thinking it's not cyclizing. It's not because it's super saturated. I've tried everything. Um, it's not. This is just some crap at the bottom here. I'm fairly certain. <sighs> so once I actually get it working, I'll upload the video because I, I've said I filmed it all the times, and I say in the filming that oh, if, if this doesn't work, I'll upload it anyway. Um, but I. I then when it actually fails, it's, it's dreadful. You know, like I can't upload a failure video, really. It'd be a bit boring. So, yeah, I've got to get that working. And I've got to work out what's going wrong before I can fix the problem. Now, this here is some salicylic acid, which is being gravity filtered for no particular reason. Um, I'm doing that um, not really for the channel or anything. I'm actually just doing that with my girlfriend. We're making some esters. Starting off some basic chemistry because she um, dropped out of chemistry in year 10 because um, she hated it. And now, I don't know, this is karma punishing her for, I don't know, gets a boyfriend and is obsessed with chemistry. Um, yeah, so we're, this is salicylic acid and I finally got some methanol. Um, this was actually only $2 a litre. How, how good's my labelling? I would not mistake that for anything else. Um, and so we can make methyl salicylate. I've, I've made ethyl salicylate before, um, but it didn't smell that nice. It was sort of a very ooh, clinical sort of smell. Um, we also distilled over some limonene from orange peels, which was really nice. Um, although at one point uh, during the distillation, a cow broke through the fence over in the paddock over there somewhere. Um, so we had to go chase a cow which isn't one of my favourite activities. And then we left the steam distillation running a bit too long and the things cooked on the bottom and the flask cracked. So, and that's the last one of my 500ml flask. So I'm down to one 250ml flask left out of my uh, flask collection. Well, with the jointed glass, obviously. Oh, that's some, that's got all aspirin in it for a moment. I had to get the, had to hydrol hydrolyze the aspirin to get the salicylic acid. Um, so I'm going to have to buy new flasks, which I'm not too chuffed about. Well, I mean, I'm excited for buying glassware, but I'm not very excited about spending money that I don't really have. Here is the limonene, actually. I'll just show you it quickly. You can see it's got some water underneath it, and it's at that top layer. Also, this ethyl salicylate. Look, my girlfriend's handwriting is so much nicer than mine. Um, you can see it sort of was in that container, and then it dissolved the container. So I should really put up a poster here of the um, plastics and the chemical 
um, incompatibilities of things because that ester has just absolutely destroyed that glassware. And at least I had the sense to put it in a large container. Um, I don't really think that, I just thought, you know, that would be a nice place to collect all the vials together. And then when it melted through, it just collected in this. So this plastic's fine. But the plastic, whatever that vial was made out of, is not fine. Alright, so what am I going to do today? Well, I'm going down to the beach next week. And I think it'll be pretty cool to do some thermite on the beach at night. And try and make some glass or something or other. Um, and this gives me an opportunity to try out my new, well, it's not that new. Um... Uh, current and voltage controlled power source. Um, I got this a little while ago. My university was selling off old equipment. Um, so I got it pretty cheap. Um, and so we're going to just run through a Sunkist bottle. All praises be to Sunkist. I've uh, got some scrap iron. You know, like my property um, used to have a lot of fences and stuff. So this turns up on all over the place. Like I just, I just walked outside and found that on the ground. Um, and we'll, you know, find a bit more of it and we'll use them as electrodes and put some salt water in the um, Sunkist bottle, put the electrodes in and um, let it run. Um, make it some iron oxide. See, this is what I mean by a lot of scrap iron. This is just fencing and stuff. That's a pile of calcium oxide and carbonate, which I still haven't got around to doing anything with. Um, you know, and while this might not be the most sort of efficient method like you know if I start with iron carbonate or something you know I could probably just buy that I could probably just buy iron oxide for dirt cheap off the internet like you know and it's nearly it's nearly good I get rid of some of this because of like a wire like this just sitting out there and I've hit that with a mower or ride a mower or something it's gonna wreck it and people are gonna cut themselves as they walk past so basically got rid gotta get rid of it anyway um, little wire just sticking out of the fence here. So, I think I might as well just turn it into iron oxide for the price of salt and electricity. Okay, and here we are. Um, just had to grab the multimeter to check that all the connections were correct, and they are. I put ball water in there, so it's already got a lot of salt in there. Dissolved. Uh, it's all connected up, so I chuck it on. Well, that's quite a high voltage. Why not? Um, and then we see somehow we're starting to get some electrolysis happen. So that's great. Um, it's pretty slow. I'll add some salt. That'll increase the speed of it quite significantly. Alright, so we're about 40 minutes in. And it's going along fine, um, but it is going to take a while. And I thought to myself, didn't I, didn't I make heaps of iron oxide um, during the dichromate synthesis? Like surely that's lying around somewhere. But I mean, it is like you know, a year and a half later. So you know, I, I mean, like I would have thrown it out maybe. And I was trying to think about it, like, oh, where would I put it? You know, maybe put it in a bag somewhere. You know, maybe I clean it up. Maybe I just threw it out in the garden at some point. Not that I thought I would do that, but so no, right, let's just have a look around and fuck me sideways. I still have them in the original buckets underneath just the bed. Oh, that must they must have been sitting there for you know over a year then. You can see all the cobwebs in them, and, but yeah. So this is iron oxide that would be heavily contaminated with nickel. Um, nickel oxide, and this looks like it's after the um, the uh, hypochlorite, so it's probably going to have a high amount of chromate in it. So I'm probably just going to have to wash these. I can't really separate the iron and nickel out very well. I think that's why I left these buckets under there, because I thought at some point I'm going to work out how to separate the iron and nickel sort of easily. But it's not an easy task, they're very similar. Um, but if I'm just making a thermite grade iron oxide, this should be great. The nickel shouldn't slow it down that much if it's an oxide as well. Because it does also get reduced. Um, however, it's not as energetic as iron, but um, yeah. It might, it might make for a nice, bright, slow burning thermite as opposed to just a, one large flash. So I ran this overnight at about half an amp. 
because um, at, I was running originally about 2 amps and everything was getting very, very hot. And I think I even melted a little bit of the plastic here. It was right next to the, the metal. Um, so that wasn't great. So half an amp, everything stayed really cool. Um, obviously slower than 2 amps. But, um, and you see here, this is what the iron looks like now. Not much of it left, so I'll just chuck this over for another um, bit of steel I'll find around. As you can see down the bottom there's a whole lot of iron stuff. This will be corroded a little bit slightly because I changed every so often I change over the um, positive and negative so that I sort of corrode both of the uh, electrodes sort of equally. Also over here I've washed <coughs> I filled this bucket full of water and I let all the iron oxide settle and then poured it out because there's still quite a bit of chromate in there and I think a lot of hard well um, sodium chlorate and sodium chloride and stuff from the from the hypochlorite breakdown so this will be good now I can just um, combine this with the black iron oxide that I'm going to make from the electrolysis and then I'm going to heat it all to dry and that will drive off the water that will decompose any chromate that will be left in there to chromium 3 oxide which shouldn't slow down a the thermite really that much and um, we'll, the heat will also convert the black iron oxide to red iron oxide after all the water is driven off. So that'll be great and then I'll have heaps there. Um, I might just run this just for a little bit more, make it worthwhile a bit, a bit better because there's not heaps of it in there and I can run this, you know, for the next day actually. So I'll do that. It's nearly done. Um, still pretty clumpy, so I'll let it dry a little bit more. Um, and I might as well just spit it out and leave it in the sun. It is bloody hot today. I don't know how hot it is, but it makes excellent drying for, you know, salicylic acid. I thought this was pretty wet this morning, and now it's dry and it's just past midday. So, yeah. Though I did leave my iPad out in the sun while filming um, before. Trying to get, you know, just the fast motion of this thing heating up and uh, driving off the water. And my iPad did not like that. It gave me, you know, the big temperature warning and you know, it was too hot to touch. So glad I didn't leave it out there any longer in the sun because uh, probably would have burst the battery or something terrible. All right. Um, why do I start every video with all right? Whatever. Um, this has been running for two days now. And you can see sort of... Definitely at the bottom, you can see all the solids and then yeah, you know, there's a bit more. And uh, but I'm out of time, so I'm gonna have to switch this off because I'm going to the beach today. So yeah, um, and then I'll have to, I guess, wash the solids and then um, dry them and convert it to red iron oxide. And I'll do that anyway because it's, it's usual having some on hand and um, having some that isn't so heavily. Um, filled with nickel for a change because I'm pretty sure these are just straight sort of steel iron um, rods you know they're not stainless steel so they don't contain the chromium and the nickel that the um, the cutlery would so so it would just be mainly iron oxide you know it's not like, not the world's most highest purity thing but it's not not all that many occasions where I need high purity iron oxide because most of the time it just gets pumped to the thermite. Um, so I'm going to switch this off. And then I'll show you the other iron oxide. Also, excitingly, I have my first Patreon wall drawn thing. Had a Patreon member who's been a bit mysterious. Request a giant, well not a giant, but a capital E. I think it's probably the worst capital E I've drawn in my life. I'm not really the best drawer, but hi, that's there. So that's exciting. You can also be on that wall. If you follow the link below. Um, yep, so I'll show you that final iron oxide and then say goodbye. Here it is. It's looking all rightish. Um, you know, maybe I'll leave it out in the sun to dry a little bit more. Um, well, just before I leave. And then I'll put it in some Ziploc bags and we'll weigh out an amount and weigh out the appropriate amount of uh, aluminium and 
take them down in separate Ziploc bags and then I can just mix them and down when we're down there. So it's good. Um, it's very, very hot today. So um, should, you know, any little bits of water still, because it's a bit clumpy still. You can see it's sort of a bit acting a bit like mud in some of these lumps. Um, and you just see the two sort of colours in the iron oxide, which sort of implies that there's wax. Okay, I'm running out of memory onto my iPad, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed some of these updates. I don't know if you like this format of video where I'm just sort of telling you what I'm doing and doing a small little project, doing some everyday chemistry. So tell me if you like it or tell me if you just wanted the video sort of just centered on one thing. I don't even know what to title this video. I'm sure I'll come up with something while it's uploading. Okay, I'll see you next time.